you were excited for her. I thought you invited her. I thought you invited her. I thought you were going to invite her. You said you were going to invite her. I was supposed to. I'm sorry. I forgot. Okay, don't me too. Hi, Erica. Hey, honey, what's up? Uh, we're having a party at my house for you. You coming? Oh, yeah. I'm on my way. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here. Hey, thank you guys so much. Hey guys, I'm so excited. Okay. I love this game. Um, hey guys, let's blow up the candles. You're hitting them. Hey, since Erica's in here, just gonna blow it out. I will. Well, I need the whole rest of the One of the things that we find as we look at scripture is, is that God is very clear that he is present with us. And what I wanted to have happen tonight was, is I wanted these young people to present that scenario for this reason. How many times have we come together as a body of Christians on a Sunday, on a Wednesday, and we sing praises about God, we read scriptures about God, we have classes about God, and all that time, He's right here with us and we don't even acknowledge it. We don't even acknowledge His presence. Tonight, how many of us thought, I'm going up to the house of the Lord to be with God. God's going to be there. How many of us, when we sat down and we got ready to sing, thought, God's here. I'm, I'm singing praises to Him. The scriptures say that God is with us in a very special way in that we are a temple and he has put his Holy Spirit in us. He is ever present with us. And so we'd like to share a scripture from Psalm 139 that talks about God being present. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. Scripture, as I was reading through Scripture, 
uh, there's a passage that just really stood out to me. And I wanted to share that with you. It comes from Exodus chapter 33, beginning at verse 7. Uh, it'll be before you hear. It says, when Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and they stood at the entrance to their own tents, watching Moses until he entered that tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and they worshiped, each at the entrance to their tent. And the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one who speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to camp. But his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. You know, as I thought about this passage, I thought, wow, can you imagine being Moses? Going up and, and when he gets to the front of the tent, he looks out and there's all the tents of Israel scattered all out there. And as he gets in front of the tent, all Israel stand in front of their tents. What a picture that must have been. But nothing compared to what happened next. Because next, Moses would walk into the tent and this pillar would come down at the entrance of that tent. And I guess one of the neatest passages it said that God and Moses would meet face to face. Wow. Wouldn't you like to have been in the tent and heard what was discussed? If it was me, I'd probably just shut my mouth and just stand there. You know? What do you say to God? But not only did it say face to face, but it says as if talking to your friend. And instantly there, my mind went all the way back to the Garden of Eden. You remember when Adam and Eve were there? And it said in the evening, God would walk with them in the cool of the day. And then sin took place and separated us from God. God withdrew from man. But in Moses' case, he met face to face. But there's another part of that passage. Barry, could you go back to it just for a second? I love this last part. Then Moses would return to the camp. But his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Everybody went about their business, went back in their tents, went about their daily lives. And Joshua just said, I'll just stay here in the presence of God for a little longer. You know, there's a lot of suggestions as to what this face-to-face -face means. And it means basically it's just an intimate relationship with someone else. There's a lot of talk in Scripture about face. We see where it says in, in some passages someone hides their face from someone else, which is usually done to show disgust for another person or for something that they're doing. There's another pa other passage that says that a person turns one face away from someone else, which shows disgust or rejection. And then there's one that says that they raise the face in Scripture to show favor, to show respect or importance. And there's even a passage that talks about our face shining and was used in reference to a smile. So, Joshua goes in, and we're not sure if he's in the tent or just standing outside the tent. It seems to maybe indicate that he may have been in that tent as well when God met with Moses face to face. But whatever it is, there's a lot of speculation as to why he stood outside that tent. 
why he waited at that tent. Some said, well, that's a lot of time where legal matters were, distrib- or were disputed or when people had questions about God, then they would go and he would answer questions for them about that. Some people say or suggest that he was seeking after an experience or he was seeking after an encounter with God. But if you remember who Joshua is, he's had a lot of experience with God, has he not? In the battles and all the things that he's done, a lot of encounters with God. So I don't know that that's it either. Personally, I believe Joshua was simply wanting to remain in the presence of God. I believe he just wanted more of God's presence. Not a single experience, not a momentary momentary encounter, but just to linger in the presence of God. He was simply being present in God's presence. I want you to think about that for a minute. He was simply being present in God's presence. Tonight, that's how we started. In asking that question, are we present in God's presence? I've been around a, a lot of worship leaders. I've, been, I've gone to a lot of uh, videos and things like that and watched worship leaders. And one of the things I hear constantly from worship leaders is saying, man, let's, let's worship and let's lift up and God will show up. You know, as I read scripture, the scripture says that we are the temple of God. God lives in us. And so when you and I come together, God's with us. Amen. It's not a matter of Him showing up. It's a matter of when we come together and worship, will we show up and be present in God's presence? Can we go through a whole worship service and sing the songs and do all those things and not really realize that God is present with us? But the scripture takes it a step further than that. Because you see, when we leave, our experience isn't just in the church building. It isn't just with one another on a Sunday or a Wednesday. But when we leave, the temple of God leaves. It goes throughout our world. God's presence goes with us as we go into the world. And so God's presence is something that because of Jesus and what he did on the cross, we enjoy 24 hours a day. We're never separated from the presence of God. And I believe as Christians, our lives would transform if we realized that God was not just an encounter on Sunday or an encounter on Wednesday, but that God is with us all day long. You see, one of the things that you and I need to do is learn to be present in God's presence, to clear away time, to think about God. That means while I'm at work or I'm at play or I'm going through a hard time or a good time, God is still present in all of those situations. When I'm driving down the road, God's present. And don't you think that would change maybe our behavior? Because on Sundays, we do a pretty good job of behaving. But during the week, if we realize that God was present with us, might that change us some? I believe so. 